my name is Caroline Strawson and I'm a multi-award winning EMDR and rapid transformational therapist. I specialize in trauma, PTSD, CPTSD and narcissistic abuse because my goal for you is to have post-traumatic growth and go on to live a even higher life because of the trauma that you have been through. So if you're new to my channel, then a massive warm welcome to you. And please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss my videos. Go and check out all the other videos. And you will see in the notes below groups that I have, free groups. I have a membership. I have my book that you can see. So you can go and get some really, really cool resources from free all the way up to one-to-one -one working with myself. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about parenting with a narcissist. How do you do that? Because we see so much in society, the ideal is, of course, we need to co-parent. We need to co-parent, that's best for the children. And of course, if we are talking in an ideal world, it absolutely is the best for the children. But when we are dealing with a narcissist, you can't co-parent with a narcissist. Now this makes it really, really challenging because if you've got people around you that keep saying to yourself, saying to you, just ignore them, just ignore what they are saying, you know, this is what is best for the children or, or the child that you have together, you know, try and communicate, maybe they don't mean that. You can feel incredibly frustrated because if we're still not healed from narcissistic abuse. And when I say heal, that's really a lifelong journey because actually healing from narcissistic abuse allows you to look at all your inner wounds that were actually already there before. It's just the narcissist is actually shining a great big spotlight on them and all of a sudden you are aware of them all. And people who end up in a narcissistic relationship, they will be what we call codependents. So they will have a lack of self. So they will have lots of feelings of not feeling worthy and good enough. Cognitively and consciously, you may think, hey, I, I, I think I am good enough. I think I am worthy. And I've absolutely, of course, you are. But when we have a subconscious belief that is formed in childhood, for whatever reason, it doesn't just have to be from bad childhoods, it can be for whatever reason, then that is our driving belief that everything that happens to us is because I'm not worthy, it's because I'm not good enough. And if you surrounded yourself with loving, beautiful, kind people for the rest of your life, you probably wouldn't have any triggers for that. Sadly, the world isn't, isn't like that. And we are always going to come into contact with challenging people where if we haven't healed that, it's always going to come up. But that's a whole other video. And that's um, what I can talk about in, in another video. Today, I want to talk about this parenting with a narcissist. But the reason why I was mentioning that was if you have got well-meaning, because most people are well-meaning friends and family who are trying to say to you, oh, you must try and get on. You must try and communicate better because it's better for the children. Okay. My response to that is, thank you for that. I will keep that in mind and take that on board. Do not try and get that person to see what you are going through. If you want to try and show them that, Go and have a look at my other, one of my other videos, which is a video I have specifically made for you to go and send to your friends and your family. So they start to get an inkling of what you are going through. Because most people, when you go through a breakup or a divorce from a narcissist, will automatically just think that it's just like a breakup that you're just going to get on with your life, that you're going to be able to communicate. And sadly, that is not the case with a narcissist. That's why you're watching this video. And I am sure you can relate to everything I'm saying. Because you know what? I've been exactly where you are. I have been there trying to co-parent with a narcissist. Literally, don't do what I did. I spent years trying to co-parent, literally draining every ounce of my energy, trying to validate myself as a mother, trying to prove my worth to that person. Because whatever I did just wasn't right and just wasn't good enough. And yet they chose to not see the children very much, but they sat in a place where they felt that they could still say things to me. But of course, because my unhealed inner wounds were still raw and fresh, they hadn't been healed. Of course, for me, I needed to come back. I needed to validate all of that too. So you cannot co-parent with a narcissist. Now, I know, like I said, society will want that. The courts want that even. And maybe your family and friends keep on saying about co-parenting and trying to get on. But let me tell you, I believe you and you don't need to prove anything to anybody else. And I'm going to give you a way of parenting with a narcissist. It isn't co-parenting, but it is a method that I teach my clients that is still putting your child or your children right at the heart of your divorce and breakup. 
Because let's face it, at the end of the day, that's what you want, isn't it? You want what is best for the children. You want your children to be as happy as possible. And I know it can seem really, really challenging because you think, oh my goodness, what if my kids turn out to be a narcissist? What if the manipulation and control continues when my children are with my ex-partner? How am I going to cope with all of that? And we spend a lot of our time and focus, just like I used to, focusing on that. What are they saying to them? What are they doing with them? What are they going to be like when they come back? And all my energy was focused on the relationship that my children had with their father. And I want you to bring it back to you. Stop focusing on things you can't control and let's start focusing on things that you actually can control. And what you can control is your relationship with your children. So regardless of what happens when your kids are away with their mother or their father, when they are with you, that's what we focus on. So take for instance for me, before my children would go and see their dad, and they don't really see him very much um, anymore, but when they do go and see him, they don't go overnight now, but when they did, probably maybe for two years of, of um, from our, our divorce, when they used to go, there would always be a lot of anxiety, there would be a lot of tension from my children. And I used to start to resent that because I thought, I'm dealing with all of this, and then when they are there, they're as good as gold, they are trying to do everything, and then when they come back, they're crying, there's always been an incident, I would at the start send lots of messages back, stop saying that, stop doing that, and of course, I would get a message back, it's none of your business what I'm doing, etc. And we'd be back and forth, back and forth. You know, he would be saying the kids are fine with me. And I'd be saying, yes, but they're not. They don't want to say that to you because they're trying to please you. And we'd be back and forth, back and forth. Zero resolution other than the fact what was happening was I was giving my ex supply, narcissistic supply, by kind of messaging and retaliating back. So he was quite happy with that. Yeah, here we go, more supply, fantastic. I was drained and exhausted trying to prove my worth as a mother and trying to say that I am putting the children first and please listen to me, trying to say it in every which way that maybe he would have this epiphany and go, oh, okay, then I get what you mean then. But to no avail, just didn't happen. So it was only when I started to realize, hold on a second, this clearly isn't working. And definition of insanity by Albert Einstein, doing the same thing every month and expecting different results. So just take a look at how you are parenting right now. And if you are pulling your hair out, you are feeling stressed and tired. Are you doing the same thing every month in the hope that they will have this epiphany that they'll realize what a great parent you are and that actually they have been wrong all of this time? Because if you're waiting for that, oh, please stop because it's not gonna happen. They're never going to change. So if you want to feel better and start to heal and move on with your life, and believe me, this is the best for the children, and you need to stop focusing on what you can't control and bring it back to what you can control. So what exactly is this parallel parenting then? So parallel parenting is when two parents completely disengage from each other. Now bear in mind, they probably won't want that to start off with, but you completely disengage from each other. And if you imagine it like a railway track, so your children are like the train in the middle and you and your ex-partner are like a track either side. So you are disengaged, you are going along that track, the children are in the middle going nice and smoothly and never shall those tracks meet because those moments those tracks meet, the train's going to come to a stop and it's going to be clunky and bumpy and it's not good for the children, okay? Because we want to put the children at the heart of this, not in the middle. And that's really, really important for your children then. So we completely disengage. So what I advise that you do is two things to start with. One is either use a third party parenting app. Now I recommend Our Family Wizard. That's the one that I recommend to my clients and lots of those use that. But there are other, others out there as well. But have a look because that keeps everything in a hub and it's very controlled. It's time stamp, date stamps. Because how many times if you are emailing or texting between you and your ex-partner, how many times, oh, I didn't get that didn't you get the email that I sent you? And you end up having these conversations. That doesn't happen with a third party application. And that's why it's really, really great to have, especially with a narcissist, because everything is documented. If you don't want to go for a third party app, because they do obviously cost money, then what I recommend is you make a completely different email address, completely different. So it's not coming into your regular emails at all. You make a completely different email address that is purely for your ex. And then if you've got your phone, for instance, you don't just have it on the front 
apps, you move it to the second or your third page on your phone because you don't want to be seen pinging up whilst we're breaking the addiction. Remember another video about that if you look um, and scroll down because we're always checking all the time. Have they emailed? Have they texted? Have they done this? Because we've got that addiction. We've got to break that for you, for your healing. So I recommend either a completely separate email address and also a third party application. I also recommend that if you are texting, WhatsApping, Facebook messaging, any of those, that stops. And what I also recommend is you buy a old phone, one of those old bricks that you can't even text with, you know, they don't cost a lot of money. And that is then your tool to phone, communicate, if in an emergency because i get it you know you think if your kids are with them or if they are with you and maybe something happened you don't want phone calls or texts coming through to your phone and you just don't want that communication because we know there's going to be a lot of supply and manipulation so my advice go and buy a really really old phone okay um, like the old bricks almost an old nokia phone or something that you know if you've got a text you've got to kind of go through the numbers like you know c is like one two three for instance use one of those because if you need to show the courts you can go hey i do have methods of communication if there was an emergency i have a phone specifically for him i have an email specifically for him for communication or we've got the third party application. So you've got all bases covered. If you've got everything coming into your phone and you're seeing it popping up and they can text you and message you and all of this, that is not good for your health. You will be more in a state of a trauma response. And if you're dysregulated, I guarantee it, your children will be dysregulated too. So it's really vitally important that you create the environment that is conducive for your healing. And that starts with how we parent and how we communicate. It's really, really important. So if we've got this phone set up, we've got an email or a third party application set up, the only talking that we will have is if there are changes to any arrangements that you have. This isn't for you to have back and forth. It is literally gray rocking. So literally no emotion, no nothing through these communication tools. You don't need to discuss anything with them unless it's through a court, if you're going through court for maybe contact arrangements or something like that. But once you have a semblance of a routine about when the children are going or with you, that's what it is. Literally, it's only really if there are changes or maybe one of the children is poorly and they're staying or vice versa when they come back. And that's where the tool or the email comes in, not these back and forth texts. Because I guarantee it, if you're still healing and you've got that addiction, you will want to respond. So using it like this, we're still keeping the children very much at the heart of the breakup, of the divorce, but you are disengaging. And you can then focus on your healing, which will in turn massively impact your children. You'll break that cycle then if you do that, okay? You going back and forth, we're not going to heal. We are not going to heal. We are massively slowing down that. So you need to create the conducive environment for you to heal. And then if they're sending, bombarding you with messages through your email or the third party application, well, there you go. You have proof. Proof maybe for a restraining order or a non-molestation order, the harassment aspect of that, because you're still keeping it focused about the children don't want to be getting sucked into back and forth okay and if they say well i want to be able to text you how am i going to get hold of you in emergency you say i have a phone here's my new phone number and block them on everything including social media and when i say block them on social media that does not mean you go and set up a fake account so that you can have a little peek about what they're doing or what their new supply is doing with them no that is not going to help you stop putting your energy on them bring it back to you. This is your life. And I want you to live your life at a higher level now because of the trauma that you have been through from narcissistic abuse. But I know the parenting aspect is so important. And it was only actually when I thought, Caroline, stop focusing on him, focus on you. Now, don't get me wrong, there were still issues when the children went and when they came back, but I created routines then to make it easier before they went. And then when they came back, I would give them a hug, I'd give them space to talk if they needed to say anything so that they knew that I was going to always be there to listen. And then we would kind of, I would say, okay then, and I might ask some questions like, well, why do you think your dad said that? Trying to get them to start to think about human behavior as well in an age appropriate way. And then I might give it maybe 20 minutes, half an hour at the most, depending on their age. And then I'll say, okay, 
okay then, right, this for our hot chocolate and why don't we go and watch a film? Because then it's like we're back in our environment, I'm installing a healthy sense of self because what I want to do with my children when I am with them is make sure they know they are loved, that they are secure, that they know they're good enough and worthy enough simply for who they are. So when mum or dad, who is the narcissist, is behaving in a certain way, your children start to recognize that that behavior isn't a reflection, isn't because of them. It is a projection onto them because that's who their mother or their father are. Doesn't mean they can't love them and can't have a semblance of a relationship even, or even a good relationship, because they can. But if you can install, when you have your children, a healthy sense of self, not conditional love, not because you've got 10 out of 10 in a test, not because you look like a supermodel, nothing like that, that you are amazing simply for who you are, you can create massive change for your children. And you can break this cycle of codependency from your perspective and narcissistic personality disorder. You can create in your children a healthy sense of self so they know that they are good enough so that they go out and they don't have toxic relationships like you have had. And the reason why I know this is because my two children have an incredible sense of self. They understand completely their father of why he behaves and acts the way he does because they understand his childhood. They understand all of those parameters. They still love their dad and they still communicate with their dad, but they get it. They know that simply for themselves, their dad's behavior is no reflection of them not seeing them very much. It's actually because of their dad, nothing to do with them. That is powerful, the gift that you can give your children. But you can only give them that gift if you start to heal yourself and create that conducive environment. So parallel parenting is what you need to be doing. Other people don't need to know that it is parallel parenting. If they want to think it's still co-parenting so that it stops the hassle for you, because they're not going to understand if you start to say, my ex is a narcissist, they're going to think, oh, not that term again. But remember, I've got another video that you can send to your friends and family as well. So just know that you don't need to prove anything to anybody else. I believe you. And ultimately, this is about you healing and then passing that gift on to your children, parallel parenting, so still doing the best, best job you can as a parent, yet disengaging from the narcissist so that you can put the children right at the heart, create that environment. So I hope that's been helpful and giving you some tips about how you can parent with a narcissist. Remember, if you haven't hit like and subscribe with my channel, I would love you to do so, so you don't miss out on any of the videos. And all it remains for me to say is lots of love to you, you know, loads of strength. You can do this. I believe in you. And remember, if you'd have seen me in 2010, you would have not have recognized who I was. Who I am now, I am living my life on a higher level because of all the trauma that I went through, because of that. So I'm living the life, my passion, my purpose of helping people like you, because I want you to have what I have. But that takes time and it takes a lot of deep and inner healing work. But I know you can do this. So please take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.